Hi well, there, uh, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Uh, another SolidWorks tutorial. I'm going to revisit um, one of my earlier tutorials, which is a pillowed surface model. Um, because uh, the other way I showed to do it probably wasn't the best way to do it. But anyway, there's, when you're CAD modelling, there's lots of ways to do uh, everything, as you probably already know. So what I'm going to do here is... Um, so the, this is sort of like the back of an old um, iPhone or the top of a um, MacBook kind of um, flat, flat rolling over into a, a soft corner. Um, so I've got a sketch here which is controls the uh, exterior dimension. So this is a quarter, I'd mirror the model side to the side and then vertically to uh, get a whole model. So what I'm going to do, so I've created two lines with a setback of 18 millimeters from the corner. Um, I'm going to add a style spline. Uh, so leave it on Bezier. Um, we're going to add enough points here so I can create a C C3, G3 connection um, on the corners. So to do that you need to have four points lined up. So for each end we're going to create one, two, three, four points and then over the side one, two, three, four. So including the end point you need to have three points lined up to create a G3 connection. Uh, lined up, this is going to be easy because um, because the curves we are matching to are lines so these are just going to be collinear these points. So we select that spline, you look down here, whoops, so it's still a busy air curve, so it's a, it's a single span curve, and it's curve degree 7, so degree is 1 less than the amount of points that you have, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 points. Okay, um, so we're going to select those three. Control polygons, make them collinear, and then horizontal. And then again, over here, catch the, select the three, collinear, vertical. Now I'm going to um, dimension these from where they meet the line. So five. 15. I'll do this side independently. I could I could put equal relationships or constraints on uh, there, but we might want to have the corner being asymmetric. Okay. So we select our style spline show curvature. See that that's coming around the curvature is flattening right off into the straight. That's probably suitable for what we want to do. Just leave it like that. Turn our curves on. Okay, so I've I've got a um couple of planes set up here. So the first one there, that's like the vertical wall height. And then the second is the pillow height. So an offset above that again. Might be a bit drastic. Okay. So what I'm going to do is create an extrude. So there's our exterior wall. Turn planes off. Look at the curvature. The zebra stripes there. So that's already a G3 connection between these two surfaces, between the flat, the planar surface, and the corner. So with the zebra stripes, I'm not using I'm not using the built-in zebra stripes because they're too fuzzy. They're not they're too indistinct even on high quality. So instead, I have a uh, created just 
some stripes in Photoshop and I'm using that instead because it's much less blurry. Okay, turn that off. Now, I've created another sketch which is the planar surface on the top. So the top lid, the middle of the lid of the uh, laptop or the back of the phone or whatever. So if I go into that sketch, basically it's um, set up the same way as the exterior sketch, except with the style spline. If we look here, it's the same. Degree 7, so it's got 8 points. 1, 2, 3, 4 points lined up uh, horizontally. 1, 2, 3, 4 points lined up vertically. Look at the G3 connection there. Um, they are, I've just, on all the control polygons, I've just made them equal, an equal relationship, um, because the shape here isn't quite as critical as on the outside, but you can individually dimension them if you wanted. So if I show curvature on that, it's, you know, it's suitable for, for this demonstration. Okay, now I want to create this side surfaces here. So on the right plane, I'm going to create a sketch. And insert a style spline. Now again, because we're matching to a, a line, we can go one, two, three, four points uh, to make our um, G3 connection. And then the outside, we're just going to put one point, an end point. So the degree of the curve is four. It's got five points. It's still a busy air curve. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do here is select our three control polygons, make collinear, and then. Horizontal. I'm going to dimension them from the, from the end point. I'm not going to dimension this one. What I'm going to do is instead constraint with an angle so we can control the roll off there. I just want to check, show curvature. You can make it accelerate much more and then flatten off again, or I think I'll bring it back, make it smoother. Okay, four and eight, we'll leave it there for now. Okay, so that sketch, insert, surface extrude, and then pick the outermost point there, up to that vertex, okay, and then the front plane, I'm going to do the same thing again, style spline, one, two, three, four, and then another end point, which makes a degree four curve, five points, I'm going to select these three control polygons, make them collinear, and then horizontal. Again, dimension, make it the same as the other spline. Four and eight, and then 125 degrees, I think it was. I'll just turn curvature on so we can see it when we're outside of the sketch. Okay. Save that. Let's make sure that was 100, yeah, 125. Okay, insert. Surface extrude up to the farthest vertex, if that makes sense, because I'm going to trim these extrudes back. So up to that vertex. Okay, now I want to trim these extrudes back to the vertexes on the inner surface, inner plane, our surface. So in our top plane, we're going to sketch the line one to the other vertex and then back out. 
Okay, and to to first trim. So we're using the sketch to trim, remove those two sections. Okay, I'm just going to knit everything together. So insert surface knit. Okay, now we're going to insert surface boundary boundary surface. So direction one will pick our trimmed extrusions. Direction two, oops, not that. Two edges. Okay. Now make these two edges and make them tangent to face. I'm not going to make them curvature to face because SolidWorks has a way of over defining things. If the input geometry is say G2 or G3 then um, SolidWorks seems to respect that even though it's only got a tangent connection on the um, on the boundary. Okay. Now I'm just going to turn the zebra stripes off and have a look at the curvature combs because sometimes SolidWorks can um, make things a bit flat or put funny, see there? See how the curvature comes down and then hooks up like that? It's because I played with this tangent influence. We don't want that. So let's try the other direction. Nothing appeared to happen. Nothing seems to change. Okay, I'll just leave it. Tangent influence on zero. Okay, so our outside boundary, there's no constraint on there. It's just a positional constraint. We'll go okay. I'll just knit those together. Have a look at the curvature. Curvature can be pretty patchy in SolidWorks because it doesn't seem to have a very high underlying mesh uh, quality. So that's why you end up with some signs of these spikes, even though that's an extrude, you know. You'd expect that to be consistent rather than having a... There's obviously a... Uh, a polygon under there and the mesh which it uses to display or calculate the curvature. Anyway, so let's have a look at the zebra stripes instead. Okay. So as you can see, excuse the sound of the fan, my laptop's winding up. Um, that's fairly smooth transition through and around, even though I haven't um, Specified a curvature continuous connection on any of those three boundaries. It's just tangent, so you can see SolidWorks is obviously using the input geometry of these two edges, which have a G3 connection, and then a G3 connection here from our extrude. So, pretty happy with that. Let's have a look at what run a fiddle, fill it along the edge, see how that works. Um, curvature continuous. Fill it goes on okay. Whether it's curvature continuous or not, I don't know if I trust all works, but anyway. You could probably run a uh, sweep around there. Um, because as you notice with the um, putting fillets on you end up with these extra patches which isn't that tidy um, you could, you'd run a um, sweeper pipe along here and use that to trim back the edges and then just um, patch in the um, the uh, fillet manually using boundary surfaces um, okay so there you have it it's another tutorial from AJ Design Studio um, pillowed surface with a G, G3 connection to flat, flat planar surfaces in SOLIDWORKS. Thanks very much.